welcome back friends welcome to another video from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we are going to look at the structure and function of mitochondria you know mitochondria is one of the very important organelle that is present in both animal cell and plant cell and it provides the source of energy uh, for their organism that is why mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell now these are small tiny organelles with two different membranes so it has a double membrane two different membrane bound organelle which are rod shaped in nature and present in higher amounts inside the cell cytosol now if we look at the structure of mitochondria what did you will see this is a very basic drawing of mitochondria it consists of actually uh, in a very overview if I say mitochondria is nothing but two different sacs arranged with each other that is a bigger sac outside and a smaller wrinkle sac present inside these are the two different sacs now the first layer of membrane that is present outside is known as the outer membrane this is known as the mitochondrial outer membrane okay and the inner side the sac the membrane that is making the inner sac is known as the inner membrane okay outer membrane and inner membrane actually I should say this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane okay now if you look at the structure you know the inner membrane is wrinkled it's creating protrusions like like the finger like say like fingers now these protrusions are known as Christie okay it is known as Christie this thing Christie okay Christie are those protrusions that are coming out now why we have so many protrusions like that the reason for that is that one of the very important physiological function and process goes on in those in this wrinkled membrane and that is the production of ATP and you know ATP acts like an energy currency inside the cell so the more ATP is generated the cell will get more energy because ATP hydrolysis into ADP plus inorganic phosphate will drive most of the reactions that are carrying out inside the cell so in this case in this basic overview this is the this is the membrane structure overview now inside this inside the inner sac it is also filled with some cytosolic components some watery components now those, those region is known as the matrix so let me write them it is known as the matrix this is matrix so we have a matrix inner membrane outer membrane and Christie's that are involved in now this matrix consists of so many different enzymes and protein components okay which are responsible for the production of energy in mitochondria now the protein components that are present in matrix compose almost two-third of the complete protein contents of mitochondria so most of the proteins are present in the matrix now those proteins let me draw the proteins with this with this green color so so many different types of proteins are present and they are scattered in this matrix area okay now two more things that are found in the matrix area one is known as the mitochondrial DNA because mitochondria is an organelle that too contains DNA we know that DNA is only present in eukaryotic cell it is present inside the nucleus but mitochondria carries DNA there is DNA inside the mitochondrial matrix and that is known as the mitochondrial DNA or empty DNA and those DNA is nothing those are circular DNA small circular circular DNA that are found inside now this mitochondrial DNA specific mitochondrial based codon mitochondrial genes and the inheritance pattern of this mitochondrial DNA is maternal inheritance type now what are those things we'll talk about that in a moment but it carries the mitochondrial DNA it carries ribosomes so let me draw ribosomes ribosomes okay let's say these are ribosomes so mitochondrial ribosomes those are also found okay that are present and some more proteins and enzymes present now if you look at this inner membrane itself the Christie's there we have the most efficient and important enzyme that is making the ATP and that is known as ATP synthase so ATP synthase is like a rotor that is found in the Christie in the, in the layer of Christie in this membrane 
this is making ATP. So it is ATP synthase. So this is the structure of mitochondria and the structure that we are looking if you make a section cross section of it we will find this. Okay. Now there are multiple mitochondria that are scattered inside the cell. Now what functionalities is mitochondria plays? In one word in one sentence I can say that the function of mitochondria is to produce ATP in turn it is producing energy for the cell. Now how will they do that? The idea is in this matrix area as there are so many enzymes and proteins Krebs cycle which is a process after the glycolysis which is a mode of aerobic respiration. You know aerobic respiration is a mode where we have after digestion of the food, after ingestion of the food in our body we break them down with the glycolysis and we produce pyruvate. Once we produce pyruvate, we will take the pyruvate inside the mitochondria and in the matrix that pyruvate is then converted into FADH2 and NADH. Now this FADH2 and NADH those chemical molecules act as energy containing molecules. So let me talk about it. Let's say we have this pyruvate convert them into FADH2 and NADH. These are energy carrying molecules. Now once this energy carrying molecules are produced there are electron transport system which is found in this inner membrane and the distance between the gap that is present between the outer membrane and inner membrane is known as the intermembrane space. Okay. Now here between the two membrane there is a space. Now the idea is in this membrane in this inner membrane there are specific factors and proteins embedded except for ATP synthase there are other protein factors embedded we call them different complexes like complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 like that. So those complexes help in carrying electron or transport electron from complex 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3, 3, to, 3 to finally uh, to this uh, ATP synthase and finally it will be pumped out. Now at that cases every time it, it shifts an electron it will also pump some protons out into this membrane space, inner membrane space, the intermembrane space. So once the protons are pumped in this space, the matrix becomes less proton and the proton concentration is higher outside there. Okay, Then it generates a concentration gradient of the protons and once the protons are taken down the concentration gradient from this inner membrane space inside the matrix, this ATP synthase will also tag ADP with inorganic phosphate and it will make ATP. So the idea is you know they will transfer they help in the transfer of electrons and once they transfer electron they will also pump out protons. Okay. Once pumping the protons we have ATP synthase which will convert which will take ADP and inorganic phosphate and make ATP out of it. Okay. This in a sense of how this process, I, I think you can see this, this ultimate last page, um, part of the board. Now this is how they produce ATP. Okay. Now this video is not about how they produce ATP. There are separate videos on that. You can watch that video in my channel. But the idea is mitochondria will uptake glucose, it will uptake pyruvate and break them down, produce energy containing compounds, use that to make ATP. Now once ATP is produced, mitochondria will release that ATP outside the cell, in the cytosol, in any other places inside the cell, when the cell can take that ATP and then function properly. So these are the sequential events when mitochondria plays the most important role of, protein, uh, of ATP production or energy production. Another thing I should mention is about this idea, why do an organelle contains DNA of its own? Now the idea here, it was supposed that 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 this idea this hypothesis that this this organelle was nothing but a prokaryotic or a prokaryotic organism let's say a few let's say thousands and thousands year back even millions of year back this act as a bacteria mitochondria was nothing but a bacteria it's a prokaryote that carries its own components that carries its own genome it carries its own ribosomes own proteins to make energy for their own to keep living on their own. Now maybe due to some intention that 
organism is engulfed by a larger cell which is a eukaryotic cell once the eukaryotic cell engulf that bacteria inside now this bacteria tends to stay there and it's it thought that this bacteria is getting benefits like it gets all the nutrients it gets everything to to make their own energy it gets everything for their living so that bacteria or that prokaryotic organism as they are getting benefits from the eukaryotic cell or the host cell it starts to stay there and and after so many years that cell is now become an integrated part of the eukaryotic cell and that is called as a endosymbiosis theory as they are in the symbiotic relationship that this bacteria is getting benefit and the cell who helps them to stay is also getting benefit from mitochondria because it's making so much energy that the cell don't have to do that cell get the energy and they get the nutrients this mitochondria get the nutrients in that sense both of them seem to live together throughout the evolution and then we find this as an organelle that can answer why mitochondria have its own dna why mitochondria have its own proteins and ribosomes and stuff to make make all these important components now it is not only true for mitochondria it can also be applied for chloroplast because you know in plants chloroplast also contains its own genetic material its own proteins and ribosomes so this in a sense is the idea of structure of mitochondria and function of mitochondria i hope you like this video if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you